Hi guys, this is a part two video on my Cisco site to site VPN. So this video will cover finding your way around the site to site VPN settings. It's a follow up video from my first video which was creating site to site VPN using the VPN wizard. So if we browse to configuration site to site VPN, uh, we come to the area where we can edit the VPN settings. And the first portion is the connection profile. So uh, a connection profile identifies the peer of a site to site VPN, so the other side of the gateway. And on the right hand side, here is the your access interfaces. So, in here, you uh, can enable or disable uh, IPsec access for iKey version 1 and version 2, and you can enable or disable them by clicking these checkboxes. Uh, this portion bypass interface access lists for inbound VPN sessions. Uh, this will bypass your access lists and allow all VPN traffic through the firewall without enforcing any access list filtering. So it's good for troubleshooting when you feel access lists are causing potential issues. Also, some organizations uh, bypass uh, access lists on one firewall but enforce the access lists on the other end of the firewall. Um, going further down here is your connection profile. So if we double click one of these uh, this one and we can see the settings inside here uh, at the very top we've got the peer IP address so we can see the IP address of the peer gateway uh, we can also see the connection name of the peer gateway and uh, we can see the interface as well so we can see the interface the VPN terminates on then we've got the protected network so um, this is the local and remote network that will be sent over the VPN tunnel, which are the subnets that will be part of the encryption domain. Then we've got this uh, group policy settings, group, group policy name. So um, you can configure any group policy settings associated with this connection profile. The default is specified here, so default group policy. And uh, we'll have a look at group policies uh, very shortly. You can manage that from here. Double click here, you can see the settings in here. Um, down here, we've got the IPsec settings, so IKE version 1 and version 2 settings here on these tabs. Um, so you can configure the IKE settings from here whether you want to use pre shared keys or uh, certificates, and uh, or authentication and encryption you can uh, manage from here as well. So you can uh, adjust these settings as required. At the very bottom, we've got the NAT exempt, so whether NAT has been exempted within this tunnel. So there's no NAT applied to the subnets you're sending over the tunnel, which, le if left disabled, may break your VPN connection because the source address may change. So it's good to exempt NAT on the interface where your local uh, encrypted domains reside. So if we cancel here and we'll move on to the next tab, which is the Group Policies tab, if we double click this. Uh, we can see the settings. So you have a default group policy and can create new ones from here as well. Uh, group policies can be shared amongst connection profiles. So more than one connection profile can use the same group policy. And from group policy, you can tighten the policy up to uh, specify the tunneling protocol. So we've got these ones selected here clientless SLVPN, IPsec, IQ version 1, version 2, and lay 2 tunneling protocol here. You've also got the filters as well. Uh, so you can choose between standard and extended ACLs to apply to this particular group policy and have filtered control access to this VPN connection. Uh, these ACLs can be seen and edited in the ACL manager, so these ones here, which we'll have a look at the end of the video. So let's move on to certificate management. Uh, so you can add identity certificates and CA certificates from this area. So uh, identity certificates. Uh, which identifies the Cisco SA to its peer and the CA certificate is required uh, which is the issuing certificate from VeriSign or an internal CA which may be a root certificate or any subordinate certificates as well and you can add these here so if we look at the advanced settings the first area is the tunnel groups if we click one of these um, so the tunnel group lets you specify attributes for the IP sex site, site connection that you are adding. Um, also, you can select the group policy from here. Uh, you can select the I key parameters down here, as well as the keep alive monitoring settings over here as well. The next portion, which you may spend uh, more time 
in than any other of these areas is the crypto maps um, so in crypto maps you can adjust or add transform sets which is basically the IPsec proposals which are the encryption and authentication algorithms so if I click one of these we can see the settings inside so um, yeah so you can manage these from here you can also uh, enable PFS down here as well so uh, this is used for additional security and you can choose uh, a Diffie Hellman uh, algorithm group for PSA, PFS from this portion here uh, the higher the group the more secure but uh, the more processor intensive it will be on the firewall if we go to the summer policy advanced section um, you have some advanced settings in here such as NAT traversal and reverse route injection for distributing routes then you've got your final tab here traffic selection uh, you can have the encryption domains in here or interesting traffic which will be encrypted if the traffic is from and to these subnets or hosts so you'd have them specified here in the source and the destination area you've also got some more settings here enable the actual rule uh, specify source service a scheduled time range as well for this um, crypto map next is ikey policies um, so ikey version 1 and version 2 policy entries are in here you can add or change these here and then assign them to the connection profiles uh, you can also edit or add these directly within your connection profiles which will reflect the changes in here so these are not specifically used you need to add them to the connection profiles before they're actually being uh, used by the VPN the next portion is the iKey parameters so these are some further iKey parameters for iKey phase 1 settings so you can adjust these as required I'm not going to go through all the settings uh, the next one is the IPsec proposals so here you can create or edit your transform sets uh, then you can choose these within your crypto maps uh, you can also create them within crypto maps as well for ease and flexibility so they're not being used unless you use them in your crypto maps so they're like objects with objects you use them in your firewall rules uh, otherwise uh, the objects themselves just sit on the firewall don't do anything unless you use them somewhere on the firewall um, so IP pre-fragmentation policies so the IP pre-fragmentation policy specifies how to treat packets that exceed the maximum transmission unit uh, setting when tunneling traffic through the public interface so this feature provides a way to handle cases where a root or NAT device between the AC and the client rejects or drops IP fragments then you've got your certificate to connection profile map and uh, this is when the AC receives an IPsec connection request from uh, with client certificate authentication it assigns a connection profile to the connection according to the policies you configure in here finally you've got your system options crypto engine and ACL manager bottom three here so the system option uh, so this pane lets you configure features specific to VPN sessions such as uh, maximum number of uh, active IPsec VPN sessions crypto map sorry crypto engine um, so crypto engine is used for performance purposes when both SSL and IPsec are being used so you can configure the pool of uh, cryptographic cores specifying one of three options in here so you've got your balanced option uh, which equally distributes cryptography hardware resources between SSL and IPsec then you've got your IPsec which allocates cryptography hardware resources to favor IPsec and then you've got SSL which allocates cryptography hardware resources to favor SSL finally you've got your ACL manager um, in your ACL manager uh, you can add edit and delete ACLs and ACEs access control entries to control VPN traffic and then you can apply these in your group policies we looked at uh, earlier on in the demo so that's a, a kind of a, a quick overview of the VPN settings and where you'll find each particular settings but you'd probably spend most of your time in the connection profiles uh, possibly tunnel groups and crypto maps and uh, that's pretty much it to be honest um, that's it for this video thank you for watching